For today's video, I'll do a review of the handful of men's wallets that I have used over the past 15 or 20 years. I don't have a tripod, uh, and I'm going to be doing this with manual focus on the go using my DSLR, so pardon if uh, the quality is shoddy. But anyway, I have some pretty cool pieces here to show. Uh, these are wallets that I've used for years, uh, so this is kind of a time trial. As you see, um, they don't all, all look so pretty anymore. Um, we have three, uh, actually two Gucci pieces, one Comme de Garçon, and two Yoshida Porter. So uh, two Italian and three of Japanese brands. And I'm going to go into detail on each one of these. So uh, let's jump into it. So this was the first Gucci wallet. Uh, this is the first of two that I've owned. This was a gift, a really nice gift. Um, and I have no idea how much this wallet cost at the time. But looking on Gucci's website, it seems most of their men's wallets run around five to six hundred U.S. dollars. This is uh, this is brown. I don't usually choose brown personally, but I mean this is a pretty iconic um, Gucci wallet with that you know really recognizable Gucci pattern is a kind of a canvas material on the outside of brown cowhide leather. This is made in Italy. As you can see, I mean, this is, I've used this wallet on and off over the past, uh, I think I got this in 2004 or 2005, so, you know, 17, 18 years. And I've used it on and off for many years as my daily driver. Um, so you, you can see it's held up pretty well. The outside um, kind of kind of wears, as you can see, but I actually don't mind that. Kind of shows its age and becomes kind of gets a nice classic vintage thing going on. But you see some heavy fraying on my camera focus there. Heavy fraying on the edges, and honestly, a lot of this, which you'll see throughout the video from my own bad habit of uh, sitting on my wallets in my back left pocket, something I did from back in the day in, in college and stuff, and I don't do anymore. Not only because it's bad for your wallet and it's uncomfortable, but evidently it's all, it can also be bad for your spine and stuff like that, so I don't recommend sitting on top of a wallet regardless of how much cash or whatever you have in it. But anyway, I mean, look at that. This is a theme we'll see in this video, but, you know, Gucci, I like Gucci. Um, I don't own, I've never owned anything else besides these two wallets that we'll see by Gucci, but it's obviously an iconic brand with a long history. For me, it's a little more striking than Louis Vuitton or some of those other major houses. Um, I like Italian stuff, I guess. Not that I've owned much. But for a $500 wallet, I think it could have held up better. You see some kind of discoloration. It's really soft leather. I, I actually like a lot the kind of shiny, pardon some dust on the inside of there. I haven't used this in a while. I like the kind of shiny texture on the inside. Um, this is a very shallow wallet. It's good for U.S. dollars. It's not great for Japanese yen. The yen almost sticks out the top. So this is a pretty small wallet. Um, it's not great for daily life in Japan, where I live now. Um, but, you know, great stitching. It's this really nice, iconic Gucci um, logo. And... Uh, 
far as a thin, kind of understated brown men's wallet goes, I, don't know, I was always pretty happy with this, but long-term reliability could have held it better, I feel. The second Gucci wallet I, I got was also a gift in uh, probably 2008. So this one also going on 14, 15 years. This is an all black uh, leather interior, also made in Italy. This one has a, a coin pocket, which is kind of convenient for Japan, which is still more a more cash-only society or culture than the U.S., which is partially changing. But, you know, this one, I'm not sure how much it was retail, but I'd imagine in the ballpark of 500 U.S. dollars. Um, you see the same long-term reliability issues. Heavy fraying on the corners, which again is partially my fault, but I mean, look at that. For, for a $500, let me, let me focus in a little more. For a $500 wallet, you'd hope that it would hold up a little better. Um, heavy fraying on the bottom here, where this kind of material pops out, threading and whatnot. I've had to kind of cut it with scissors. Um, you know, the, the quality could be better for that insane price. Um, I think the real signature part of this wallet is this nice big fat kind of vulcanized rubber type Gucci emblem here, which is pretty cool. This is a nice uh, wallet. It's a little taller in size than the brown one, so it worked better for Japanese yen. Um, the same kind of shiny interior, but again, like, look, look at that. If you're paying five, six hundred dollars for a wallet. Long, um, I, th I feel like they should just hold up for decades. And I guess these have, but they don't look in tip top shape. Moving on to my Japanese wallets. Um, this is a Kondoga Son which is Rei Kawakubo's brand, started in the late 60s or early 70s. She is one of the you know major juggernauts, along with Yoji Yamamoto and those guys, of Japanese fashion. I think Comme de Garçon is based in Paris, and it sounds like it, um, but it is you know a Japanese designer and a major brand in Japan. Um, this wallet was manufactured in Spain. Really nice gold um, lettering on the inside. This is nice brown cowhide. Pretty solid zipper. It's got this uh, little leather tag thing here. Um, I used this wallet with a wallet chain. Um, as my daily driver for a few years, and as a result of that, I'll try to zip this up with one hand, as again I'm holding the camera in my other hand, I don't have a tripod for this. A lot of, uh, I put the, the ring through here for the wallet chain, and as a result, it kind of pulled out this, this corner. This is a, uh, you know, this is probably a $120, $140 wallet. This was also a gift, so I didn't purchase it myself, so I'm not sure, but it's got this kind of nice star insignia type pattern. The leathers patinaed and shined up really nicely over the years. Um, Long-term reliability, again, this corner is kind of annoying and, uh, again, partially my fault from a lot of usage with the uh, while with the chain but it could have held up better but I mean this is not that expensive of a, of a wallet not in that kind of hyper luxury upper tier category um, in general it's kind of a unique form factor this kind of kind of uh, 90 degree zipper action uh, the zipper quality 
you know, this is a metal zipper. It's held up extremely well over the years. Uh, zooming in here, we see it's actually YKK, which is Japan's preeminent zipper brand and some of the best zippers in the world. And it's held up very nicely. Again, brown's not really my thing, although I did use this as a daily driver. Don't really use it so much anymore, but it was a gift from a very special person. And I would say, you know, as a Conde Rasson piece, it's quite unique and a pretty cool wallet. And now we'll jump into my favorites, which are both um, Porter Yoshida products. One that I've had since 2004, so 18 years, and it has held up magnificently. I'll go into detail. And then my newest purchase, which I just got uh, a few days ago, which is a very iconic tanker uh, series long wallet, um, which is kind of funny. In the States, you don't really see men using long wallets, although it's very common in Japan. And also, you know, things like theft and pickpocketing just simply almost don't happen here. So having a long wallet uh, peeking out of your pocket, something like that, is not inviting necessarily someone to uh, you know, pilfer it from you the way that you would be in a large American city. It'd be kind of stupid to have a long wallet sticking out. But uh, I'll jump in on this one. Porter doesn't use a lot of leather, um, although they do use high quality materials. Um, their wallets are very big. Again, the Japanese yen and um, I'll show that in, in a minute, is a larger bill. Um, this wallet is around 6,000 yen, so with the current exchange rate, you're talking about 50 bucks. It's got that snick of Velcro. Reminds you of the wallets you used as a kid. There's more Velcro here. Try to this, open. this one pops open to create a uh, coin pocket, which again, very useful in Japan. Really nice Velcro. This is kind of a, a almost kind of rubberized synthetic material that this one's made of. Again, no leather. When I got it, it had a really nice thick black ring that I used. I've used this wallet on and off for many years uh, with a wallet chain. And when I used to be a, uh, when I used to tend bar, I had a long chain on it. Sometimes it would uh, get stuck on uh, the bottles in the rack. And it ended up pulling that ring so many times that it kind of warped and I had to toss it. But it did come with a really nice ring, which you'll see a lot of porters feature. Japanese, people, Japanese men tend to use wallet chains. Anyway, um, I think one of the things that jumps out right away is after 18 years of usage, just look at the way that the printing has lasted on this wallet. Also, at a, at a glance, just look at the edges. They almost look brand new. A little bit of wear on this top corner. Again, I used to sit on this bad boy a lot, but porter materials, uh, porter items, you know, use synthetic materials, but really shiny, extremely durable over the years. And, you know, they are handmade in Japan. All porter products are made in Japan. One thing that's nice, a lot of Porter products you see is this kind of see-through vinyl window. You have your driver's license in there. Deep pockets, um, again, for the Japanese yen. You've got a zipper in here. They uh, use YKK zippers, um, which hold up really well. It's, you know, awesome reliability on this. I don't think it's, it's not the most stylish wallet or most pleasurable to the touch. It's kind of tough, a little heavy. Um, and it's big. This is a, a big wallet. Um, it's a little big for, uh, you know, putting in the back of your trousers, the back pocket. But uh, it's it was my first Porter purchase, if I can recall correctly. And I think just pretty amazing that it's going on 20 years and is still in this condition after sitting on this thing and using it for many, I mean, just years on and off. I don't rotate my wallets that often. I'll usually go like maybe six months to a year using the same wallet. It's not like I'm switching them on and off 
black to brown based on my outfit or anything like that. It's just kind of the mood that I'm in or where I'm at. Um, and then last but not least, for sure, uh, my most recent purchase is the very iconic Tanker series uh, Porter wallet. This is my first long wallet, and I'm really loving this bad boy. Uh, you see this just gnarly, awesome, chunky YKK metal zipper on the top. And the Tanker series is awesome because it's got this black and orange color theme. Orange is my favorite color. Um, you know, you'll see other videos saying that the YKK metal zippers are just really tough, but this one was like butter right from the start. So I, that hasn't been my experience. I actually have another tanker piece, which is a messenger bag. It's about a $300 bag. Um, same thing. It's, it looks even better than the day I bought it. Just amazing reliability. And oh, and by the way, this wallet, I don't know what the retail is. I think it's about 15,000 yen. So about a current exchange rate, about a buck 20 a buck 25 US dollars but uh, I got this on actually Amazon Japan uh, for a great deal it, it was new not used uh, but it was 12 around 12,000 yen so you're talking about 90 US but same kind of signature velcro got that nice snick to it tons of orange throughout and this is my daily driver right now so I've got it all set up with my stuff but you see that Yoshida sticker made in Japan. You see how big the yen bills are, and they just go right down in there. And I like the idea of a long wallet because you don't have to fold your money. The Japanese tend to take great care of their bills. Their bills are super crisp. You don't see them balled up and all dirty and nasty like, Ameri uh, like American dollars. It's got this kind of middle pocket. I don't know what it's for, receipts and stuff like that. You could sandwich a bill in there, but and then you got tons of credit card pockets. It's actually um, six on each side. Get in there. Six on on this side, six on the other. Then there's another zipper pocket, which I'm not even using right now. Plenty of Velcro around, um, but I, I'll talk a little more about this material. This kind of plush neoprene, it's actually called MA1. Um, supposedly it's modeled after um, American um, Air Force bomber jacket material after World War II or something like that, uh, during World War II. It's a very shiny, soft, plush, very addictively, you know, kind of compulsively touchable material. Um, I don't know, it's not so scratch resistant which would make sense. I mean, this could be punctured quite easily, but I've never punctured a, a Porter item. Um, this stuff just looks, it'll look this as good or better than the day you bought it, decades on, very shiny. This is, you know, the, this is a weird wallet and the whole Porter tanker line in general has that puffy, shiny, weird look. It's almost like a, like a toy, like a play thing, um, but I love it. Really nice fat, uh, wallet ring. I'm sure this thing could withstand years of abuse. Um, this will sit. This will fit nicely down into uh, a chest pocket of a suit jacket or a blazer, as long as you don't fill it too much. Um, it will definitely protrude from the rear pocket of your trousers, so. You know, you want to be uh, cognizant of that. Um, these you see sported by men a lot in Japan, although it is very unisex. You see women with Porter Tanker products as well. They have these in different colors, like uh, arm, kind of army green. There's like a limited edition bluish, but I, I always like the black and orange. This just really legit zipper, kind of iconic. Um, Porter label. Again, these are hand stitched in Tokyo. So for a $90 wallet, I mean, that's not cheap, but I think you get a lot of bang for the buck uh, for what you're paying for. And it's um, 
that material is again really pleasurable to the touch it's fun to use so that's kind of my roundup of wallets that I've used over the years some have held up better than others um, but I mean you can't go wrong in investing in a wallet of this caliber you can always you know go go to Marshalls or your discount store and grab a trifold men's wallet made in you know Thailand or Bangladesh or something for 10 or 20 bucks on sale but in my experience it's been enjoyable over the years to have these kind of iconic pieces even if it's not something that you're going to show off or people will remark on you know it's it's enjoyable um, to know that there's a story and tradition and heritage behind these um, so again some are gifts some I purchased myself but uh, I think you know I'll I'll be using all of these on and off for years to come so thank you for watching um, please subscribe to the channel this is the first of this type of video but uh, I might be doing more um, I don't have a lot of stuff but I, I have quite a few watches um, so that might be another interesting video but anyway uh, thanks so much for watching and uh, go and get yourself a porter cheers thanks y'all bye I believe in